boys and girls, Miss Layman here again today for a couple more chapters of Miss Jaffe is Daffy. Today we are reading chapter three and it's called Nice and Calm. When I came into the school on Tuesday morning, I saw the strangest thing in the history of the world. <laughs> Poor grown-ups sitting in chairs playing violins. The chairs weren't playing the violins. The people were. If a chair played a violin, it would be weird. And they were all dressed up in black suits and dresses. Mrs. Jaffe was watching them. What's going on, I said. Aw, oh, Mr. Klutz told me he wants everything to be nice and calm while he's away, said Miss Jaffe. So I hired a string quartet. Studies show that children can relax and learn better when they listen to soothing music. I think we had learned better if we ate lots of ice cream, cookies, cake, and candy, I said. Hmm, said Miss Jaffe. Grown-ups always say, hmm, when they're thinking. <laughs> Nobody knows why. That's when little Miss Brownnoser waltzed into the hallway. Oh, I just love classical music, Andrea announced, as if anybody asked her. That's violin concerto number five by Mozart. I learned about it in the music appreciation class I take after school. Andrea takes classes in everything after school. If they gave a class in picking Lynn out of your belly button, Andrea would take that class so she could get better at it. Why can't a truck full of violins fall on her head? The hall was filling up with kids and teachers listening to the boring music. Man, that's the fattest violin in the history of the world, I said. That lady can't even hold it up. It's a cello, dumbhead, Andrea said, rolling her eyes. Oh, snap, said Ryan. Well, it looks like a violin that needs to go on a diet, if you ask me, I said. Everybody clapped after the boring song was over. Then the musician started playing some other boring song. Can you feel the tension just oozing out of your pores? Miss Jaffe said, taking a deep breath. Hmm. I learned in graduate school that listening to classical music increases the flow of the blood to your brain. Ugh, disgusting, I said. I don't want blood flowing through my brain. Arlo, Andrew said, if blood didn't flow to your brain, then you would die. I was going to say something mean to Andrea, but I realized that Miss Jaffe had just said the most amazing thing in the history of the world. Wait a minute, I said to her, did you just say you went to graduate school? You betcha, I said. She said, after I finished college, I went to graduate school so I could learn more. I slapped my forehead. Was she out of her mind? Why would anybody want to go to school after they graduated from school? What is Miss Jaffe's problem? After I graduate, I told her, I'm not going anywhere near a school. Well, I spent four years in graduate school studying how children learn. Miss Jaffe told me. I'm looking forward to trying some of those new and exciting ideas right here at elementary school. This week, we're going to think outside the box. Huh? Why would anyone be thinking in a box to begin with? If I was in a box, I know what I would be thinking about how to get out of the box. Miss Jaffe was weird. If she was really a learning expert, she would have learned that after you graduate, you don't have to go to school anymore. This music is so beautiful, Andrea said. Don't you think so, Arlo? <laughs> yeah, just the opposite of your face, I said. I wanted to say, so is your face. But that would have meant that Andrea is beautiful. And if the guys ever heard me say that, they would say I was in love with her. So don't ever say so is your face after somebody says a word like nice or pretty or beautiful. That's the first rule of being a kid. Chapter number four, the new phys ed teacher. The bell rang and everybody rushed to their classrooms. We pledged the allegiance with Mr. Granite. 
Then our computer teacher, Mrs. Yonkers, came into the classroom. I have bad news, Miss Yonkers told us. There's no computer classes this week. Why not? asked Emily. I love computer class. She looked as if she was going to cry, like always. As you know, this is Civil War week, Miss Yonkers told us, and kids didn't have computers during the Civil War. They didn't, Ryan said. How could they uh, get on the internet? There was no internet, Miss Yonkers said. What? No internet, I said? No YouTube? Sometimes me and my friends go on YouTube and search for people falling down or hamsters playing the piano. I could watch that stuff for hours. What a horrible world it must have been without computers, Ryan said. Mrs. Yonkers told us that during the Civil War, there were no calculators, no DVD players, no iPods, no airplanes, no cars, no light bulbs, and no video games. Did they have cell phones? asked Neil, the nude kid. Cell phones, Miss Yonker said. They didn't even have regular phones. How about big screen TVs? asked Michael. Big screen TVs, Miss Yonker said. They didn't even have small screen TVs. What? We were all amazed. No TVs, I said. Those poor kids, how did they survive? Back in Civil War days, Miss Yonkers told us, Kids would uh, actually go outside and play. Play? Outside? Ryan asked. Why would anyone want to do a crazy thing like that? That reminds me, good mite, Mr. Granite suddenly said. We have to go. It's time for Fizz Ed. Fizz Ed! Yay! Fizz Ed is my favorite part of the day because we get to play sports and games and run around the gym instead of learn boring stuff. Our Fizz Ed teacher, Miss Small, she's off the wall. We walked a million hundred miles to the gym, but when we got there, Miss Small wasn't around, and the gym smelled funny. I think it's incense, said Andrea. I'd never heard of the stuff, but it, it stinks. I thought I was going to throw up. In the far corner of the gym, there was a guy lying on the floor. We all ran over to see if he was okay. That's when I saw that the guy wasn't really lying on the floor. He was lying on a bed of uh, nails. A bed of nails. The guy got up. He was wearing a turban on his head. Oh, excuse me, he said in a squeaky voice. I was just taking a nap. On nails? Neil said, doesn't that hurt? Oh, not at all. He said, it's very comfortable. Studies show that children learn faster when they sleep on a bed of nails. Those kids are weird. I know what I would learn if I slept on nails. I would learn to get off the nails and go to sleep in a real bed. That's when Miss Jaffe came into the gym. Okay, Okay, she said. I want to introduce you guys and gals to Swami Hava Banana. He's from India. Good day, said Swami Hava Banana. And he bowed to us. It's a most beautiful morning in which to be alive, is it not? Where's Miss Small? We all asked. Oh, her, said Miss Jaffe. I fired her. And by golly, Swami, have a banana, is our new gym teacher. What? Oh, well, <laughs> Miss Small just wanted to play sports and silly games, said Miss Jaffe. What a waste of time. Instead, it showed that sports and games don't help kids learn. Swami, have a banana, has some different ideas, <gasps> don't you, Swami? Oh, yes, he said. We are going to learn about yoga. Yoga? You mean we're going to learn about that little dude in Star Wars, I asked? That's Yoda, said Andrea, rolling her eyes. I knew that. I lied. My dad told me there was a guy named Yoga who played for the Yankees, said Michael. That's Yogi, said Ryan. 
Yoga is a way to achieve inner peace and tranquility by performing specific body positions. I didn't know what the Swami guy was talking about. This is the camel pose, he said, getting down on his knees and leaning his head all the way back. And this is the cobra pose. And this is the fish pose. Swami have a banana twisted himself up into a bunch of weird positions. <sighs> Can we do the football pose? Asked Neil the Nude Kid. Oh, I never heard of that one, Swami said. But who wants to try a yoga pose? Me, 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 shouted Andrea, waving her hand around like she was washing a window. Andrea volunteers for everything so teachers will like her. If a teacher said they needed a kid to jump off the roof, Andrea would volunteer. Of course, Swami have a banana picked her. I need a boy too, he said. Me and the guys looked at our feet so we wouldn't get picked. If you look at your feet, the teacher will never call on you. That's the first rule of being a kid. The only problem was that Ryan, Michael, and Neil were all fake coughing into their hands and muttering, AJ, AJ, AJ. Where is AJ? asked Swami have a banana. Over there, all the guys said, pointing at me. Michael gave me a shove and Swami told me to stand next to Andrea. Miss Jaffe said she had to go check on the other classes. I bet you Swami have a banana will have you guys and gals very relaxed, she said. Okie dokie, I'll be back in a jiffy to see how AJ and Andrea are making out. Ooh, Ryan said, AJ and Andrea are going to be making out. They must be in love. When are you going to get married? asked Michael. If those guys weren't my best friends, I wouldn't like them. And boys and girls, that's the end for today. Next time we'll read chapters five and six. This Miss Jaffe, she's changing everything. I wonder what Mr. Klutz will think when he gets back.